time to review the account. You've been gone for a week. You've been focused on something else. And now you need to go back in your account and figure out where do I spend my time? My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of my Amazon guy. We're going to go directly into my account. And I have been focused on an Amazon conference. So now I'm like, okay, what do I need to focus on? The nice thing about Seller Central is this main dashboard does actually add value. And so in here, you can see things like improve images, restock inventory, competitive pricing, brand health, news, all these good things. So when you have not gone in and looked at your account for some time, I do advise checking these things out. So if we first start on the restocking, this is probably going to be the most critical. This is what I would start with first always. So I've sold 340 of this particular unit. I'm going to go to the live page just so you know which item we're looking at. I recently was able to swap the main image of this. Um, I had a different type of image that was showing like the two soaps behind the other two. And um, I ran some PicFu A-B tests. And I got to tell you, this doubled my sales in the last 30 days. I'm not even joking. It really doubled my sales by just swapping the main photo with a slight tweak and modification. Um, so I just did an hour long video with pick food you need to check that video out next if you want to learn more about how to get your main images right because guess what it worked now i need to restock this so 340 cells let's go into the actual SKU. so what i end up doing is i'll take the SKU. i'll go over the inventory page i'll type in the SKU, and then i'll look at what's currently inbound what's available so i do have 210 on the inbound um, i'm in the top 12,000 in beauty which is a great rank by itself and I'm gonna go ahead and click on the SKU. When I click on the SKU, I can see all of the information about the sales. So I've had 400 sales in the last 30 days, 1,000 sales in the last 90, and we're trending upwards. So if we pull up the six months, we can see a major trend upward in the number of units moving on this particular SKU, which is great. That's exactly what we wanna see. I love growth, I'm a growth guy, I'm a digital marketer, Nothing means more to me than growing sales when it comes to my job satisfaction. Now, I am tilting towards profit more and more, but still, it's really cool to see. Basically, I've got a $50,000 a year SKU right here, and this doesn't even factor in Q4 yet. So as we scroll down, we can see, okay, when was the last shipment gone in? What is my profit? Uh, look at the charges for Amazon. You can put in and figure out all of your net profits on the far right here. This is a new module. You may not be aware of it this time, but you can actually go in here and see all of your ad costs, all of your referral fees, the inbound transportation, and everything all in to see what your net sales look like. And you can see what the net proceeds are at the very bottom. Um, so if you put your cogs into a system, there are a lot of tools out there. I, I do tend to use Helium 10. Uh, quite a bit. And if you want to get 20% uh, off Helium 10 for six months, just put in my Amazon guy 20 uh, into Helium 10 to get that code. So here we can see on the very bottom though, kind of what we started to figure out. I'll move this photo up just briefly. So you can see the inbound shipments and all of the other quantities. So we created a 210 uh, quantity shipment back on 921. There was also a second shipment here for 500 and that quantity had already been in receiving. So the question is, do I need to ship more of this particular product in? Uh, that is a good question. There is not necessarily an easy answer to this. We have to dive in just a little bit more. So if we put our cursor on the inbound and availability question, here we can see there's only 28 reserved, uh, 491 quantity and 252 available, 210 inbound. So what it looks like to me is the, the big 500 uh, quantity that got shipped in has basically been utilized uh, already as far as I can tell. But the one way you can double check that is to go right on over to the FBA inventory and see what those shipments look like. One of the nice things you guys saw on that SKU, if we go back here, you can actually see the shipment IDs right here. Let's see if we can click on this and see if it goes directly over there. I actually haven't done that before. Um, it does, so it pulls up your shipment. So that's really nice. So you really ought to be clicking on your own SKU and really just seeing what's going on and how it's working and all that good stuff. So here we can see shipment created September 2nd, started receiving September 5th, all the fulfillment centers that it got sent to, but the item has not closed out yet. Uh, typically they do say it takes a few weeks to close and they're saying basically come back on September 28th. If there's any issues at that point, they'll investigate it. It does take usually six weeks for them to allow you to investigate things. But if we go into the track shipment and see like, okay, 
All these were delivered. We've got dates on everything. All that looks good. We can go over to the contents to see, okay, what was supposed to be in there? 524, all units have been received. No discrepancies, although it still does show that receiving icon. Um, and I do want that to go away, of course. Uh, but everything checks out, looks like it's fine. Units have been received. We can click on that button and see what that shows up. And here you can see all of the warehouse IDs and the warehouse uh, shipment IDs and all that good stuff and the quantities that are going in and the quantities that are going out. Uh, and you can see all the back dates and the number of soaps that we've shipped in all the way back to when we first launched this product, basically first week in December. So we haven't even had a full year on this item yet. It's a $50,000 SKU from a top line standpoint. Feeling pretty good about it. Um, really excited about the main image and the difference that this made by having the four stack just in this particular issue. Uh, and we switched all of them over accordingly. Uh, another couple of quick things you can do on a listing, you ever trying to figure out like what to do with it. Uh, one of the really cool things is you can come down to the customer question section and I have yet to do this on this item, but you can actually click on the question just like this and load a video. You can load a video answer to customer questions here, simultaneously write the answer in. Um, one thing, a lot of people don't realize this, but customer questions absolutely do index. And uh, we, other Amazon experts agree with me on this question. Um, I was at the Helium 10 Sale and Scale Conference. One person came up to me and was asking about something that Brandon Young had told them. And they said, hey, I, I, my listing keeps getting yanked. I can't put this uh, you know, gift for cancer patients directly onto my listing. It keeps getting yanked. Uh, and Brandon had told them, go ahead and have somebody ask a question and then repeat back the keyword you want to index for right in the question. That's exactly what they did, and within three days, they indexed for the keyword. So that's a really good hack for you today. Uh, definitely take advantage of putting keywords that are tricky. You can't put them directly on the listing. Go ahead and put those into the Q&As. Um, yes, you can plan a question here and there without getting into too much trouble. Um, no, I don't personally do it myself, but it, it is a thing. Uh, I've got the local business tab. You can apply for that. Sometimes they do automatically put these on even if you don't apply. Uh, your bullets and your emojis, depending on whether you're in a category where that's appropriate. I do get away with it in gift giving type categories and beauty. I think it's very appropriate. Brand stories. I cannot emphasize enough how important a brand story is. This is your opportunity to really emphasize your customer avatar. You can showcase what the brand is about. You can link to other products in this brand story. Just a lot of opportunity to really emphasize that. Down here in the product description, this is A plus content. And in my case, I've been able to get premium A plus content up, which gives me lots of access to click on different um, anecdotes like this and, and, and tools where you can click on and, and, and go between products. So I can actually scroll through products like this, which is really neat. Takes up a lot of horizontal space. It's like almost twice as wide as regular A plus content. Vertically, it's almost twice as long as well, which is really nice. So we were able to even put a video into the premium A plus content, which is a super valuable asset to get done. So if you haven't done premium A plus content yet, the way you get access to this is by making 15 A plus contents and submitting them. Also, you can't get access to premium A plus content if you haven't submitted your brand story yet. So if you really want to get in on the cutting edge things that you can do on Amazon, you have to take advantage of the core basics. And when they come out with a new module, you got to load it up and make sure it's getting in. My favorite module for A plus content is the product grid. And my, and my reason for that is that you can cross link between products. Watch as I can click that product and go over to the next one. If somebody's going to buy my damsel natural soap, chances are they're probably going to like my fruity as well. And, and so I had the ability to cross pollinate and upsell people by doing this. I can also put in a product like this one where it's a new mommy box. This one's not selling very well. And so I'm trying to push it more by, by showcasing the product in the A plus content. I can also put my best seller like this one where it's always good to just keep cross linking your best sellers. So here's an item that's I've sold and made hundreds of thousands of dollars on my mom box like that for 50 bucks a pop. Even though my cogs are pretty much identical between the new mommy, fabulous, and mom gift box, the new mommy and fabulous boxes have not taken off 
and I'm over inundated with stocks. So sometimes I try and push some of my not selling so well items. Sometimes I try and push my selling quite well items and, and really try and figure out like, okay, how can we push these items and do things that are different uh, and, and try and get some additional sales going. Product grid though, another great place to put keywords. You have the ability to stuff this with keywords that you can get multiple iterations of. When we talk about SEO phases, and I'm gonna go over to my website at myamazonguy.com slash SEO. If you guys are looking for my master class on SEO, the 70 minutes of chock full information on how you can do this. We also give away our SEO phase one guide, complete SOP, so check it out over at myamazonguy.com slash SEO. Uh, but the reason why I want to showcase this is to kind of walk you through the difference between indexing and ranking a keyword. During phase one of SEO, it's all about optimizing the attributes for indexing. And when you index a keyword, what that means is, is it shows up in the top 100, 300 rather, search results on Amazon. So if we go in here and we type in uh, artisan soap for men, I'm going to rank pretty high on this. There's my one of my items. It's got sponsored product number one. We see Dr. Squatch, which I'm trying to take those guys out. And then I have an organic uh, listing and highly rated right there, which is really nice. Um, and I probably should have at least one more show up. There it is right there. So I have multiple iterations, multiple ads, multiple organic listings showing up for the keyword artisan soap for men. Well, when you're doing indexing, your goal is to get the product to just simply show up. You're not going for ranking yet. So to index, you need one iteration of the keyword. Now I do double up and put them in my search terms and in the front end on the title and bullets at the same time. And that's because it helps it index faster. Who doesn't want to index faster for keywords? Well, if you don't want to index faster, just put it in just the front end title and not the back end search terms. But if you want to index faster, do it in both. Phase two, we uh, call this the pink word update. However, they did get rid of the brand analytics section that shows these words in pink. Uh, the, the concept is still the same. It's just harder to run this phase. It's still a very short phase. But in SEO phase two, what we do is we take the keywords out of the search terms that are already present in the title and the bullet points, and we try to go for incremental indexing. Notice how I'm still talking about indexing. I'm not talking about ranking yet. You have to index for the keywords before you worry about ranking them. That means you can rotate some of the keywords out that you're indexing for and go for some incremental indexing. If you do this correctly, an average product in an average niche can get to 1,000 keywords index in about 30 to 45 days. Once you've done that, you're ready for SEO phase three. We call this the strike zone keyword update. And in here, you're, you're laser focusing on keywords that are on rank 20 through 50. The benefit of doing this is that they're in the strike zone. They are ready to produce for you, but are not quite producing at high volume. You're getting some clicks on this, but you're not getting all of the clicks. You're not in position one through 10. So these keywords that are on rank 20 through 50, one of the easiest ways to go about doing that is you take the, the, the ASIN and you go over to Helium 10, you look at Cerebro. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to Cerebro. I wanna make sure I click on that US market. Don't wanna confuse that. Hit get keywords on the ASIN. Depending on which market and you might have to update that Cerebro dropdown. In here, I'm gonna type in keyword rank 20 through 50. And now we have a great strike zone keyword distribution. So I have 1,400 keywords advertised, 2,700 keywords in SEO organic rankings. Very pretty close to the spot on golden keyword ratio of one to two. I love the golden keyword ratio because it's very helpful for you to understand what do I need to focus on? And when we started this video, that was kind of the theme. Where do I need to focus? If you use data correctly, like Helium 10 Cerebro and the golden keyword ratio of one sponsored keyword to two organic, it will immediately tell you where you're suffering on traffic. If your sponsored keywords is too low, you're not advertising enough. If your SEO keywords is too low, that means that you're spending too much on PPC or more than likely, more than likely you don't have enough SEO keywords. You probably don't have 500 text words inside of A plus content that are crawlable keywords. So if we go back over to one of my listings here, my Age of Sage Soaps, 
and scroll down, all of this text right here is crawlable text. I cannot emphasize enough A plus content indexes. If it indexes, that means you need to put lots of keywords there. So if you want to have superb gift idea be a keyword that you rank for or all natural ingredients, you by and large better put it into the headlines of your A plus content. And what other better ways to get access to scented soap bar or other type of soap keywords than putting in the keywords into the crawlable section. All of this that I can highlight with my cursor here is crawlable text. And I am a big fan of these check boxes, but if you wanna get really hyper-focused on trying to move up strike zone keywords, use them multiple times in your listing. Not necessary in keyword SEO phases one and two because when you're trying to index for a keyword, you only need it one time. But a lot of amateur SEO experts do not realize that if you have it multiple times when you're trying to focus on these strike zone keywords, you will miss out on an opportunity. If you don't do this, you need to have multiple keywords, multiple iterations and references of these keywords throughout all of your listing attributes. That means have it in the back end search terms. That means have it in the title, the bullets, the description, the A plus content, the brand story, and in the customer questions and in your reviews. Everywhere that you have multiple iterations of a keyword will help you move up the ranking. And so that's why in the strike zone keyword update, SEO phase three, you're focused on these keywords in ranks 20 through 50. If we were gonna try and find one of those keywords that would make sense to focus on for this particular product, what you would do is you would come in and you'd start sorting by search volume. Now, my particular niche, 100,000 people a month are searching for Dr. Squash Soap. The guy just dominates the space. And so men's soap, I have organic rank 48 on. So if we click on that keyword, I've slipped a little bit here. Men's soap is something I've probably been in the top 10 for at some point. Here is my sponsored keyword rank. And as we scroll down, we're looking for my organic ranking here. I have yet to see it. There we go. It's right there with my macho soap. So if somebody's looking for men's soap, they are getting plastered with Dr. Squatch. Half of the space is pretty much owned by them. You can see it everywhere. Dove beats me out a little bit here and there. A couple of Old Spice references and some rando soap brands I've never heard of. So that's what I'm competing against. Well, if I want to win on men's soap, what I would do is I'd say, cool, it's in rank organic 48. Let's go over to my macho soap listing, which is my, my closest one, highest up in the rankings. And what can we do to get men's soap with an exact match? So here we have men's soap, and I don't have an exact match anywhere on my listing. Shame on me, right? I probably have men's soap. Well, maybe not even have men's soap. Jeez Louise. Well, I'm going to have to retool this listing. So we take the ASIN. This is why SEO is not set it and forget it, right? I'm a supposed leading Amazon SEO expert. Here I have a keyword that's in the strike zone of Amazon. And I am not, I don't have a single iteration of an exact match on the listing. Shame on me. So what we're going to do is we're going to rectify that. You need to continuously work on your listings because you too will find problems like this. So we're going to hit edit on the listing. We're going to go to the vital info and we're going to see what we want to change. So I know we have gift sets for men. That's already in here. Handmade organic bar soap box. Also really strong keywords. Exoliating natural man soap for men, right? So let's see how much man soap shows up. So if we get rid of the organic filtering that I've done here and we just change phrases containing man, how does my product do? Well, I'm, I've got 47 keywords that come up. I'm in organic rank 23 for man soap, man spar soap. I'm in some striking distance on some of these other keywords. Well, man soap sets seems to be the one that I'm doing the best on. I'm at rank seven. So if we go look at that keyword, how am I doing here? I've got sponsored rank number three. Uh, and here we go for they say I'm in organic rank seven. Depends on how you count that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sometimes uh, these are actually ad oriented. So if you didn't count those, I would be in organic seven and helium 10 cerebro would be accurate. So if we if we think about that, okay, so if I disrupt man soap set in my title, which I don't even think I have an exact match for, man soap for men is what I've got. 
right? So now I've got to figure out how do I get men's soap in here? It's a more important keyword than what I've got there already. I've got moisturized, moisturizing scented bath soap bars by Age of Sage four pack. Can I put in moisturizing men soap scented bath bars and ditch that word there? So men's needs to have an exact match, men's soap scented bath bars by Age of Sage. So got to be really careful not to go over the character limits. They typically want to have, uh, you know, somewhere around 125 to 175 characters. You'll look at the tooltip here and it says 50 in the maximum length, but that's not true. Uh, and you don't want to include these symbols, the acai, uh, that's not how you say that, uh, characters R, C, T, M. Don't put those in. Amazon doesn't care. That's why they have brand registry, so you don't need to worry about that. Quick tip, item type, keyword. Make sure you audit this once every quarter across your listings. If you ever find this to be blank, you're going to create what I call an indexing problem. That can be very problematic. You definitely want to make sure you're not running into item type, keyword, blanking issues. If you ever see your BSR go blank, so if we go back to my listing here, I'm going to hit refresh on the page. I'm trying to trigger uh, the Helium 10 Chrome extension. It finally triggered there. And if we look at the one year and you look at this blue line, if the blue line ever goes blank, that means the BSR disappeared. And as you can see, uh, if you use that yellow line, that list price as kind of a baseline here, you can see that my BSR has continuously gotten better as the year has gone on in 2022. My, my line is below that yellow line right there, which is great. That's fantastic. It's exactly what we want to see. You want to see the BSR getting lower. That means you are winning market share, which kind of brings us to our final SEO phase four, which I call uh, the search query report or the market share indexing phase. Um, I'm famous for coining the term ICAP. Uh, that stands for impressions, clicks, add to carts, and purchases. And when you are entering SEO phase four, there's nothing between SEO phase three and four that conflict with each other. In fact, they're, they're kind of married together in some ways. You're just using a different data set to chase uh, the market share. So in SEO phase three, these are keywords that are in the strike zone rank. But in SEO phase four, you're not worried about rank, you're worried about market share. And what's really awesome about the market share report, which we're going to pop up over here in the search query performance report and the market share, not only do they now give you ASIN view level. So if we were to grab uh, the Macho product, which we've been working on, and we go ahead and put it into, let's see which tab, where'd that go? So over here, if we put in the ASIN, the Macho soap, and we're going to go, we're going to go ahead and say monthly, and we're going to go 2022, and we're going to say August, right? So... You can look at this on a weekly basis. It tracks, it's free. It's a really cool report, search query performance report. We'll put it in the uh, show notes so you can see it at the top of the description as well as the top comments. So you can click on this directly yourself. Um, you can cross apply and see like, okay, you guys saw how it was 99,000 search volume over in Helium 10. Well, Amazon, this is real actual search query volume data. It says it's at 110,000 on the month. So that gives you some interesting data and way to parse between a data set like Helium 10 as well as uh, Seller Central directly. Men's bar soap is in slot number two. These keywords in SEO phase four are already ranked in order of importance. So if you're wondering where should you focus your time, if you look at this report, this will help you understand what keywords you need to focus on for both PPC as well as SEO. These are keywords you're going to want to spend money on because they're at the top of your uh, search query performance report. They give you the impressions. So I can see here there's 7,000 search volume, 500,000 impressions, and I'm getting an ASIN share of just uh, over a half a percentage point. But if you look at the click-through rate, I am dominating this with 32% of the click rates, which means that I have a higher disproportionate click-through rate than the competition. This means that when consumers see my main image, my click-through rate is higher. This means spend more money and more time working on PPC and SEO. When you see you have a tornado event, 
That is, when you have a higher impression and a lower click-through rate, the opposite is true. You have a conversion problem. But when you see a pyramid, when you're going down that marketing funnel and you have a pyramid like we have here, that means there's a gigantic opportunity. So I should spend more money on PPC for men's bar soap, and I should also go to my listing and look for exact matches in my keyword and my title. So you guys saw that earlier, we used the strike zone update to zero in on what was the keyword we went for? It wasn't man soap. We let me hit back here, see if I can find it. So we were looking for. Uh, uh, I, I've already forgotten what we just worked on. Pretty sad, I realize. Organic rank 20 through 50, uh, and we need to get rid of the word man here. Hit apply, and it's up in the, and we'd sorted this by search volume here. So men's soap. So we put men's soap into the title with an exact match. Well, if we go over to SEO phase four, that data is telling us men's bar soap is the most important keyword to have an exact match. So when we go back to the live listing and we're looking for men's bar soap, it only shows up three times on the listing. Let's see where it shows up. So I'm using control F to locate these two of them, all three of them in fact, are showing up in competitor title products. There's no exact match on my listing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna see how we could get an exact match for men's bar soap directly into important areas. Now it's gonna be tricky because we've already, we've already really keyword stuffed the title quite a bit here. But because this is the most important keyword, according to Search Curry Performance Report, we're gonna find out a way to make this happen. So we put in moisturizing men's soap, and the other one we need to get is men's bar soap. So men's soap scented bath bars by Age of Sage. Pretty hard to stuff it in there. So what we're probably gonna do is we're gonna probably just massage this keyword section here, exfoliating natural men's bar soap for men. Uh, so instead of saying for men, we're gonna just go ahead and delete that out. Natural men's bar soap. So we're gonna hit save on this. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back two, three, four weeks from now and we're gonna see like, how did I do? Did the keyword change any of this data? Uh, the other thing I, I mentioned earlier is that I had an increase in sales in the last two, four weeks because I put out A plus premium content. So if we look at this one keyword where we had, uh, so let's take a snapshot. I'll take a little snippet here on the computer so we can kind of cross apply this. Uh, and we're gonna, we need a little bit wider on the angle here. Uh, and you know, I want to get the data from the top down. So we're going to, we're going to screenshot all of this. Okay. So we're going to pull this off screen for just a brief moment. Then what we're going to do is we're going to switch this over to July. So the data was weaker in July. Let's see if the data is moving, right? So men's soap bar, which we had at a click through rate of just under 32%, pretty much static which means the main image change that I made did not change the click-through rate of the product. That means all of the gains in sales did not come through a click-through rate change. It came through probably an indexing change. That means I showed up for more keywords and ranked for them better. I didn't perform better on the keywords I already ranked for. I just got more traffic from overall keywords. So if we go, now we're gonna go down to a weekly data and we're gonna pull up the last week of data because I'm just really curious to see, like I'm just kind of surprised actually, men's bar soap right here, still at a 32% on the click-through rate, but my ASIN share percentage popped up about 0.2 percentage points. So I'm getting seen more often, but I'm getting about the same ratio of clicks. Now, as we go through the impressions, clicks, add to carts, and purchases, the ICAP marketing funnel, right here on the clicks, uh, on the add to carts, I've got 9%, which means I, I have a really big spike on clicks, but I have a massive fall off once somebody actually wants to purchase the product. And then if you go down to the actual purchases, it falls off even more at 4%. So that means my main image is really freaking good. It also means that the listing itself has a conversion problem when it comes to men's soap. So why could that be? Could it be that because we have the men's soap combined with some girly stuff with the brand story that I'm losing some of the man vote as they go down through the listing? That could be the biggest problem, right? So right here where we have all of these different soap sets, it's probably important 
that we don't start the default on the damsel here. We need to start on the men's angle. And all of these different girly angles might need to be changed. Maybe I need a different brand story that's more macho for the listing. So that's exactly what I'm going to do, right? I've, I've, I'm pretty confident I've got a great main image uh, and I don't need to change this, right? Because I've got high click through. But when people get down and they start looking at the listing, they're not feeling the macho-ness, the men's angle of the soap. So we're going to have to change that up. We need more pictures of men. Um, at least the product grade here went man cave and mega pint and stuff like that. Uh, but I And we've got like the man cave box, right? We're pushing the man cave angle, which is good. I'm glad about that. No reviews yet on my man cave listing. That's a problem in itself. Definitely need to get some sales going on that. Um, but you'll notice that we push different products as we're clicking on different things. But as I looked at this listing, I very much feel like we probably made the mistake of not focusing enough on men. And that's what this data tells me, right? When I look at the market share performance report, the ICAP, uh, and if you want to learn more about ICAP and as I go into some more defining details, check out my video on myamazonguy.com slash ICAP or click this video next. that will be on the screen here because we're going to help you understand how to go in and improve your market share, whether it's on clicks, it's on add to carts, it's on purpose purchases, or on the impressions. I call it the ICAP marketing funnel. So check out those videos next. Hopefully this was helpful as you're trying to figure out where do you focus, what do you do, and I've got lots of other content you want to check out next.